Good morning. Welcome to uh, church today. This is the uh, Sunday after Easter. Every Sunday after Easter is always the, uh, the account of uh, non-believing Thomas. So that's what we'll hear today. Uh, and Jesus' response to him. Uh, it's also a new month, so we move to Divine Service Setting 4. That's on page 203, so by the mark, page 203. Uh, our first hymn is hymn 470. That, that's the hymn written specifically for the second Sunday of Easter. Uh, but notice, uh, we're going to break it up. We'll sing verses 1 through 5. Verses 1 through 5 of hymn 470. word and deed, 
and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak together the intro. It's printed on the back of our bulletin. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up, grow up to salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. We will give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. But the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and judgments he uttered. He remembers his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. We continue on page 204 as we sing, Lord, have mercy, followed by the Gloria. Grant that we, who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection, 
confession. May by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Maybe see. First reading for today is from the book of Acts, chapter 4. The full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own. But they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them. For as many as were owners of land or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold and laid it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each as any hath need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from uh, St. John's first letter, chapters 1 and 2. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we look upon and have touched with our hands, <coughs> concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father, and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us, and indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with Him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, to forgive our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn in our hymnal to page 205. Page 205. We stand as we sing our Alleluia verse.
evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it into my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have yet believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue on page 206 as we speak together the Nicene Creed. We confess our faith. <laughs> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you, God the Father, and from the Lord and the Savior Jesus. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, the Lord Jesus has a habit of barging in on people. Today, it's the locked room where his disciples are hiding away in fear. That's not the first time he's done it. He did it to Zacchaeus in the sycamore tree. He did it to the woman at the well when he needed a drink and then told her all of her sins. And in a few days, we will hear how he does it to two believers as they are walking along the road to Emmaus. Jesus has a habit of barging in on people. And it's not always that he's unwanted by them, though sometimes that is the case. Sometimes he's just simply unexpected. But the scriptures repeatedly depicts God as one who goes out to seek our company, to barge in on us. Because he wants to be with us. He is a God of conversation and community, and he yearns for both of those to do with us. His people. Way from the first evangelism call of Genesis 3, 19, or 3 verse 9, that's when he called, God called out to Adam. Adam, where are you? God fully knowing that Adam had already fallen into sin. God shouts out, Adam, where are you? First thing barging into Adam's life. From that moment, even until this very day, God comes through doors that we erect for our own security, though they are always inadequate to give us that security. God comes to us says, peace be with you, <coughs> in the midst of all of our fears. <coughs> and we have good reason to be afraid. All hell has broken loose to, to stalk us like a roaring lion from inside of ourselves, from all around us. And from Satan himself, himself. You see, within ourselves, it can be the fear of the secret sins that we keep locked away, hoping that no one ever has the key. Or within us, it could be the fear of things going wrong within our own body as we age or face disease. And we could go on, uh, we could be here all day talking about those things to be feared in the world around us. But I don't want to be a downer, so I'm not going to do that. You can all just turn on the news. And of course, the roaring lion prowls around looking to seize us. Satan comes, accusing us of all of our sins. Satan comes, reminding us how bad we are. Asking where our God is in the midst of all the terrible things going on in our world. Satan wants you to question God in his word. Satan wants to keep you <coughs> locked in that upper room, cowering in the corner with no hope of anyone 
breaking in, barging in to save you. But the thing is, Easter, the empty tomb, shows us that Satan has lost. He has no power over us. So when Jesus barges in through that door, what does he say? Peace be with you. Peace. It's the Hebrew greeting. In the Hebrew is shalom. You might know that word, shalom. Now, Jesus doesn't come through that locked door and give a thumbs up and say a flip it. Hey, how are you guys? No. He comes with the greeting of shalom. Peace. And that is the state in which, you see, God made Adam and Eve. You see, God lived side by side with Adam and Eve. God took leisurely walks out in the garden right next to his created human, Adam. <coughs> God was at peace with Adam and Eve as they lived as his creatures, abiding by his word. You remember, Adam and Eve only had one command. Just one commandment they had to follow, abide by God's word. Do not eat of that one tree. But then Genesis chapter 3 comes along and breaks that peace, shatters that shalom between God and his created people. Now, in John chapter 20, we see that Christ has come to restore that peace by taking away the fact that we are unable to fear, love, and trust God above all things. And so, after his resurrection, the first thing he says to his disciples is peace. But he doesn't stop at peace, no. Notice what Jesus does next. He breathes on them. He gives them the Holy Spirit. He gives the church the keys to forgive and to bind up sins. You see, what he accomplished on the cross and at the empty tomb, he now passes on to his church. And it looks like breathing on them. Do you know where else in the scriptures that God breathed into his human creatures? Is that the creation of Adam? Creating Adam in peace. God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. It's Genesis chapter 2. So breathing on them, as Jesus barged into the door and did that, that's recalling, that's reminding us back of Genesis 2 when God created Adam in the first place. So here in John 20, Jesus <coughs> is creating a new people of God out of his apostles. Twelve in number, just like the twelve tribes of Israel, by the way, the absence of uh, the apostate Judas and the doubting Thomas also reminds us today that the church does include tares as well as the wheat. And these people of God then are sent on their mission 
to bring that peace of Christ to the forgiveness of sins, which restores trust and love in our Savior and Creator, and we call that shalom, peace. That is our peace with God. And this new creation, as unearned by us as the first one, dependent only on God's gracious will to restore his people to himself, well, you know what, that brings us back to our original relationship with God in the garden. So the shalom, the peace Christ brings and passes on makes us in the state of grace which Adam and Eve found themselves in before the fall. And Christ's death and resurrection has returned us there. So that when he calls us home or comes and gives in glory, we too can stand before God in his presence, righteous and blameless for the sake of Christ. And John tells us in his gospel today and in his first letter that we read from the epistle lesson, that all of this is ours simply by faith. He penned his account, John penned his account of Jesus of Nazareth, Son of God and Son of Man, so that we would know Jesus and trust in him to restore us back to rights with God. So John tells us, these things that I have written and all that's come before, these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you will have life in his name. So dear friends in Christ, hear and believe the words of Jesus as he breaks into your life, as he barges into your life, no matter what trial and tribulation you face. And Jesus says to you, peace be with you. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard our hearts and minds in the one true faith, even into life everlasting. <coughs> Amen. We'll now take a moment to worship our God with our tithes and offerings.
addition to our uh, prayers listed in the bulletin, we pray uh, for one of Meyer and her family as uh, God has called home her father, uh, Leonard Heisterberg, his funeral is tomorrow uh, at Trinity. Uh, uh, I'll conclude each petition by saying, Lord, in your mercy, Mary H. responds by saying, hear our prayer. Please stand as we pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, your Son is the firstborn from the dead. In him we have been reborn into a new and living hope. Nurture us with the pure milk of your word, that we may grow into maturity of faith and have everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to those ordained for your service the gift of the Spirit, wisdom that comes, from, comes down from above, and grace to faithfully fulfill their holy calling where you have placed them. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. build up the households of your people, that your holy children, begotten in baptism, may grow in your grace and share together in your forgiveness and life. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy, yeah. as your son's wounds brought gladness and peace to the troubled disciples, Give your presence and comfort to the troubled in our midst, especially those in need of healing. For Brad, Arthur, Tom, Gail, Marilyn, Ethelene, Marvin, Pat, Gabe, Jennifer, Larry, Russell, Jamie, Russ, and Loretta. And all those we name now silently upon our hearts. We pray also comfort all those who mourn, especially the family and loved ones of Leonard Heisberg, with the blessed joy of Easter morning. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Father of the risen Christ, you give us the crucified and risen body and blood of our Lord Jesus in this holy supper. Let us taste that the Lord is good and continually Grow up into salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that out of your indescribable grace, for the sake of your Son, you have given us the Holy Gospel and instituted the blessed sacraments, that through them we may have comfort and forgiveness of sins. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may heartily believe your word, and through the holy sacraments establish our faith day by day, until at last we obtain eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament as it begins on page 208. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and sanitary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day. For the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed his death. <coughs> and by his rising, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, with Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying.
have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. By his death he, re he has redeemed us from bondage to sin and death. And by his resurrection, he has delivered us into new life in him. Grant us to keep the feast in sincerity and truth, faithfully eating his body, given into death, and drinking his life's blood poured out for our salvation until we pass through death to the promised land of life eternal. Hear us then as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night when he was betrayed, took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he also took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. the true body of the Lord Jesus, and the drinking of his blood strengthened and preserved you, both body and soul, and the one true faith, even into life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Your sins are forgiven. Thank you. 
Eucharist continues on page 211, page 211. Please stand as we sing. Close on our last hymn, 464 and 464. 